um, I just wanted to introduce you to a couple couple of people. We've got Faz, who's um, fairly new to, to King Ray. Um, his background is a lot in fiber optics, which is going to be something that's uh, going to be a topic of discussion across all our industries very shortly. And down the back there, you've got Peter Cook, um, who, oh, gee, 15 years I think I've known um, Peter, and yeah, absolute guru in everything radio to MATV, so a great resource to have. Um, yeah, this session, obviously, a, a lot of it is about Foxtel, and I hear a lot of things about Foxtel. One of the common themes is that Foxtel is um, disappearing and Netflix and everything else is taking over. Um, yeah, it really doesn't make sense, that whole story of Foxtel disappearing. Um, in fact, Foxtel's um, position within our market is probably getting stronger, if anything. Um, if there's any doubt about um, how it is, you've just got to look at media companies and their ownership. Foxtel's, what, 35% Telstra owned and 65% um, and um, News Corp owned. Um, so you've got all of those links back to content and, you know, you've got the Fox Corporation, you've got Disney and all of this kind of stuff. So they have content. They've got a lot of content. Um, at this very moment, um, we're finishing the production of our first lot of Foxtel modulators. Um, so they're made by Zycast, our, you know, our, our partner in, in Taiwan, and Foxtel are hitting that gaming, um, the pub, the club market in a very big way, um, and in fact they're looking at um, products within that market that will show their product in the best light possible, and they'll be contacting all those pubs and clubs saying, time to upgrade. Um, and so they've got the modulators on one side that are getting produced for that market, but they're also looking at the wider market too. They're looking at residential markets and commercial markets. So they have these fantastic new boxes that have these great chipsets that can do all these kinds of things. And they'll need product um, also to help that make it. The other thing probably that a lot of you heard about is a lot of Foxtel's been pumped over our cable system and NBN uh, for quite some time. And we're going to go from a transition of being on all of those cable network, so if I plug a TV meter into my NBN connect connection at home, I will see Foxtel. I don't have Foxtel cable, but I'll see it there. Foxtel will transition away from that onto, onto a, a satellite platform. So for the trading industry, it's probably never going to be as good as, as what it is now. We're going to get all of that commercial business, all of that modulator business, we're going to get residential business and, uh, and commercial business, and all of that will be upgraded into the, the latest generation of Foxtel. So, key part of that, obviously, um, King Ray have probably been the most progressive um, company to cover all solutions, and, uh, and here today to talk about that is, is Bez. I'll hand it across to you. Uh, thank you very much for coming today um, to this presentation on Foxtel approved King Ray multi-stacker. And my name is Faz. First, Jeremy, I'd like to thank all of you for you being here, um, as well as Mike Son for organizing this, um, and also Farah. Is it? <laughs> okay. So, um, what we're going to cover today is what is multi stacker, what are the drivers for multi stacker. What are the deployment examples? How do you use this product? Um, what are the associated products that work with this product? And any tips and tricks of the trade for um, being able to help the installers. So, what is multi-stacker? Um, multi-stacker is a technology relevant for people who want to uh, use or receive Foxtel services. And it's actually um, a product uh, that enables combi combination of combining the vertical and horizontal uh, polarity into a horizontal polarity signal um, for Foxtel uh, services coming from a dish. So, in the current situation, you have a satellite dish which has output of two horizontal and two vertical. Two signals are for 
um, future and two of or current. So you've got four cables coming from your LNB on satellite dish. And uh, in terms of the multi-stacker, which is this box here, what it does, you've got uh, a vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. These two are for future, but the four cables come in. And what it does is you have the vertical polarity signal converted into a horizontal signal and then mixed within that uh, spectrum of the horizontal uh, spectrum. And that's what we've called the combination shifts the frequency a bit higher uh, to 2.4 gigahertz. So that's something that you need to watch out for because in the old system, there was a TDT that converted the horizontal and vertical signals to below one gig. And your cabling needed to be designed up to one gig and your uh, losses designed up to one gig. Here, we don't use TDT. We have the multi-stacker and the multi, and I guess TDT systems were anything from $8,000 per system to um, $20,000. Here we have a multi-stacker which reduces the cost from thousands of dollars to $219 trade price. Significant cost reduction. So when you um, deploy multi-stacker, you don't have the old TDT system which was one gig going through your cabling and uh, you, you have up to 2.4 and that's the trade-off. So together with multi-stacker, we have had to launch additional products to um, cover the higher frequencies. And as part of lo that launch, we've had to also get approvals. So roughly about 36 products we've launched recently, all approved by uh, Foxtel, which combines everything into what I would call the multi-stacker and associated products. And this is a catalog for the product range. So we have this in soft copy and hard copy. And essentially, if you're a system designer, this becomes your Bible in terms of designing your system, calculating your losses and uh, what you need to, to do. Not in this one. We'll up, um, we're going to release a next version, which will have example schematic. So this is really um, we are, we are going with a roadshow of lots of training, um, which we have ac actual boards and design examples in this presentation. Um, and in fact, in reality, the uh, installers or there are designers that design to the situation. But here, I guess in this course, what we are trying to do is give you an overview and enough tips to guide them but you're not going to be able to design the system for them. They need to be able to have either themselves or a designer working with them in terms of that specific job. But you can guide uh, in terms of what type of products they need to use for that uh, requirement. So why multi-stacker? The reason or reasons are we discussed about the TDT. Significant cost reduction. Eight or twelve thousand dollars for head end TDT compared to two hundred nineteen dollars. It's a good driver, especially if you're the user having to pay for all of that end of the day. If you're developing buildings. So that's one. There is another key driver, and that's NBN. We've had um, the HFC which was hybrid fiber quarks by Telstra and Optus carrying Foxtel services. Now, that's been passed to NBN, and there's no guarantee of service as such for Foxtel that the services, the user, if disconnected, will get the same treatment as when it was with Telstra. That makes you 
nervous if you're the supplier of services because you don't want bad customer experience. So you want to come off HFC and control the environment. Fox is already paying for satellites. This beam is already there. What's natural is to put a dish on the roof and deliver the service directly. So you've removed one part of um, potential failure in your system by moving direct to satellite reception. So multi-stack enables that. Also, when you had um, satellite or um, uh, HFC, there was buildings which were only cable for H polarity, horizontal polarity, where there were light buildings, they, were, they, can't, they call them MDU light. So customers were receiving only part of Foxtel services. And in with this case, you can use the same cable, upgrade the connectors and amplifiers, and deliver the full customer experience, all services. And also what we see is 4K TV. Also there's homes that were not covered by HFC or difficult homes or single fired commercial buildings, um, single wide residential estates, which we had only free to air. So this opens up the way because you will need only one coax for your distribution, huge potential. Some, sometimes your building is very difficult to re-cable, -re concrete, etc. You've got cable there, you use that. So that's the drivers. Good question again. Let's cover it with this uh, next couple of slides. The multi socket uh, the short answer is no. Uh, it is not designed to cover terrestrial services because it is not an amplifier. It's a frequency adaptation, a polarization adaption, adaptation device. So it, it focuses on Foxtel services, the signal coming from the LNB, the satellite dish, and the four cables, and putting it into one cable. In this example, we've got, uh, we're not showing free to air. If you want a free to air, how we combine it is the next slide where you have the free to air, you amplify, you use a diplexer. And that's actually very simple, but a very effective way where you can manage and get everything right before you distribute a system. Uh, it gives a very good way uh, of controlling um, your signal levels, power levels before you launch in your backbone. So in this case, we are focusing on just a simple residential building, um, multi-stack air, one cable, this might be in the roof cavity or somewhere where it's out of elements, but it's been IP rated. And it's been designed to last 10 years at 60 degrees under roof. So it's been hardened with the power supply beside it. So the power supply had to be also approved for that and tested for that um, lifetime and circumstance. So multi-stacker splitter, this is a two-way splitter, but you might have different case where you have more ports or um, more sockets, um, then you have more splitters and if you need amplifiers there. So in this example, we are injecting the power with an 18 volt power supply by inject injector into the multi-stacker. And that's the reason in this case, what we want to achieve is uh, basically, um, we don't want to have a power supply in the roof because it, you might not have a power point there. So you use the same quarks. Uh, what is somewhere somebody doesn't go and turn it off. So you go with a satellite and we'll figure out <laughs> apart from that. Good question. Yes. Um, if it is bigger than 10 meters, you have to use 18 volt power supply because as you go through the coax, you get a voltage drop. So that's why we're going to um, supply these. Um, if it's uh, 12 volt, um, we have the 18 volt coming. Just, 
Yes, it actually, when we supply the multi-stack, it's the only product we supply with the power supply. At the moment, the power supply is 12 volt. Um, it's not going into residential at the moment in terms of great numbers. So you need to be able to advise your customers that if they are going to have power injection, uh, the power supply recommended to be with the stacker. When we have the 18 volt, you can up, up to 40 meters of coax can be through the 18 volt. So um, again, because of the frequency, uh, we've got the Fox lap roof um, splitter, uh, which is up to 2.4 gig. And again, power injector the same. So that's a residential case. If you have free to air, you have the free to air antenna here, any uh, mass head. And when you get to about, I think here, you put a, what we call a diplexer, and you, you combine your free to air um, and uh, satellite together. So just before here, you combine. So this one, is an example of a 12-story building uh, with eight apartments on each floor. Reasonable size building. And in this case, um, we have uh, split the building into um, apartments at each floor. You've got the riser where your cabling is. Uh, you've got also the riser, but what we've ca called the head end component. So on the roof you would have the satellite dish and your antenna, TV antenna. Then somewhere in the riser uh, you would have uh, your multi-stacker. Um, you've got a DC block here because the power supply is next to multi-stacker. Located, that's recommended at the moment in terms of this design. And you don't want multiple power injections uh, points. So you put a DC block and you amplify your satellite signal. In this example, we use SAT25S, which is an um, amplifier designed to be capable of amplifying all the frequencies up to 2.4 gig um, and full channel loaded. So it's a very powerful amp. Then you have a diplexer because you've got the free to air masthead a DA43 distribution amp. Again, to get the signals right, I think it's this one. So the, uh, the multi-stacker output is about 85 dBUV. Um, here, the input into the distribution amp is about 65 from the free to air. And what we want to achieve uh, for the satellite signal, which is the higher frequency, around 100, 101, um, DBUV signal. Um, free to air is a bit lower, 93, because at high frequency you get a, bit, a bigger attenuation. So you want to have your high frequencies at a higher power level. So you've got the two amps giving you the gain for distribution before you get losses in the cables. So this is your head end. You come to the uh, diplexer, you lose about 1 dB in the diplexer on the satellite, so about 100 dB UV on the satellite diplexer, and you have free to about 92 in this case. Now, what we have um, for this design, you can do different design solution. We, we chose to have a three-way three splitter split into um, four apartment, not four level segments. So we've got level one, two, three, four, saved by this splitter, and e in each riser, I guess we would have one, uh, we'll have a four-way splitter for the four levels. So there's groups of um, blocks of f four levels, this is what this is, and then we bring it out and I split it into each level. And so this splitter is four for the four levels. And the output of the splitter, by the time you get to the amplifier here, uh, your signal, remember, remember it was about 100 dB UV, would have 
got to about 70 because of the losses in your quarks cable in the um, backbone. So you lost the, the power. You need to amplify up to be, to be able to get to the right power level for your socket service delivery to a customer. So what, what we've done is used what we call super broadband amp. Uh, the key feature of this super broadband amp is um, it's the amp that we know that has the best gain for the frequency range it has to deal with. It's a wide spectrum free frequency, free to air, and satellite, when fully loaded, uh, we can get about 109 dB um, gain on that. So it's a very uh, grunty amp. We don't believe that there's others that have got an amp up to. So if you have a customer that needs something that can do a great amplification without disturbing this, this affecting the signal, but also have be fully loaded for this application, recommend a super broadband amp. Here we've removed the, the cover. I've got a slide I'll show you on the slide. But what it does essentially get a signal, you can uh, increase the gain independently for the satellite and free to air, but also adjust the uh, spectrum or equalize the spectrum for your output. From the super broadband, you split eight ways because you had eight apartments. So you have a coax going to each apartment. You've got a um, tap, passive tap in each apartment. Uh, as this is a riser to different apartments, you will have different cable lengths up to maximum 40. So you need to choose your uh, uh, passive taps um, to have the right attenuation to get to the uh, recommended output level at your wall plug. So we recommend, I mean, uh, Fox Lighting has got from 57 up to, Peter, what's the maximum? 78. So you can, for practical reasons, we recommend try to get uh, to about 62, 63 in your socket for your service. So then you choose um, your taps, and uh, basically that's your signal. You, you've got a, a socket on the wall that has got free to air, and Fox then goes to the um, setup box, the IQ3 um, box. And then there's a free to air, uh, there's a 4K TV that's got, um, I think, IQ4 box. So that's what we call a passive solution. Um, if you want to use uh, alternative solution, in this case, we have not used those amps here. We've just got one amp after the, to amplify free to air and satellite of the diplexer. This super broadband amp is for the whole building. And then what we use is uh, active taps to um, give you the gain or amplification and equalization ability per flow. In the previous example, we had uh, an amp amplifier, super broadband per flow, but we had amp, these amps here. In this case, we've got one, one amp, but then active, and depends on the design and what they prefer. Any questions? Yes, yes, you can. But you just need to mm, sit down and ma manage it. Yes. So these are the two cases. And then we have, um, if you have typically large, very large buildings, or if you want to have all optical solution, we've also got optical solution. And in this case, with all optical solution, what you have same structure for the head end. You've got the free to air and the multi stacker, diplexer. You've got your RF, which has got the free to air and satellite, Foxtel services. You put it into an optical transmitter, and all it does is converts it to optical. It doesn't do any processing, anything. 
it just conversion from RF to optical. 1550 nanometer output. You come to what we call Airbnb dope fiber amplifier, which basically works by amplifying the optical signal to uh, a high level of gain without doing anything else to the signal. Um, because as you distribute, uh, you lose power because you're, you're splitting the optical power across 32-way splitters and also you've got connector losses, etc. Uh, with optical, you don't get as much um, issue with your fiber runs. You're, you, you have more of uh, losses in your splitters and, and uh, connectors. So in this case, um, we've got, let's say, a 16 or 32-way ETFA. So you basically have the ETFA and the splitter combined. And then you go to alternative splitters to distribute your 1550. You get to the apartment with the fiber to the apartment and uh, you put it into an optical receiver. And I have an example here actually, I think. Small. So basically, one optical receiver, fib fiber comes in, and RF comes out. Now this one is what we call, without PAN pass, one connector. So it's only for MATV application. We have another kind, which is the one shown here, which is with PAN pass which enables you to have the same, use the same fiber optic as your telco or carrier signal and passively passes or gets the signal out for your ONU, NBN, ONU for example. So that way you, you can use the same backbone infrastructure, your fiber infrastructure for both your Foxtel, um, your free to air as well as your carrier some people in their buildings, they do access control and lots of other things using the same fiber backbone. So we can support that as well. So the t typical, depending on the power level, the output, RF output varies. We recommend something like around, I think at the moment we get NEC 5 or NEC 2 and 85 dB UV out. Got it. Um, tap here, uh, you choose a tap attenuation to the level you need uh, for the, the number of um, sockets you have in that building, in that apartment. So this can be applied for housing estates, aged care, um, high, high rises, etc. So we've covered passive, active and optical. So any kind of solution you need, we can provide as King Ray. Uh, we've got fully approved optical by Foxtel, um, active system and passive system. Now, this one just shows the board that I've gone through. Um, we've got attenuators simulating the losses uh, for long cable runs. And what I'll do here is just uh, go through. Um, we've got a product which is a professional head end um, which goes into a rack and you can get the free to air uh, system. Um, I guess uh, after antenna, you, you clean the signal to a high quality before distribution. So this is uh, available from King Ray as well. The products that we will call, uh, wrong, wrong way, let's go this way. Multi-stacker, this is what it looks like in terms of vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. These two are future ports, still we connected up. So once Fox the launch it up, it's already connected to LNB. One output ready to go, power in. This is if you locally source power 
side views. Now, um, you don't have a lot of controls in multi-stacker. It's been designed that way. Tamper-proof, mm, resilient, and the only items you can do with it is uh, one of the key points, actually, I, before I, uh, I, f I forgot in the last session, was when you have the multi-stacking, the first time you want to power it up, you need to make sure there is a satellite signal at the source. Otherwise, um, if you just power it up without satellite signal, it goes into a search mode. Even if you power it off, it has to go through that search mode for half an hour. But if you have signal and you turn it on, it locks onto the satellite signal immediately. With one or two seconds, you're ready to go. So if you're an installer or advising installer, always tell them to make sure the satellite signal before they turn on the multi set for the first time. So you provision it for the national uh, switch for your testing, which is all off. And depending on which state you're in, you also set the frequencies to that switch. So you do two tests, you're provisioning. So this is a super broadband. Um, this is an opened cover, the cover removed. So as you can see, it's got a radio frequency seal. So when you close it, you get a good RF seal around it. So you've got terrestrial control for the frequencies in the terrestrial range. And you have gain control and equalization. So you need a, uh, a meter, a spectrum analyzer to measure power levels, but also spectrums. I'll show you a spectrum of uh, the multi-stacker. You've got the also for the multi-stacker. So what I'll do, because I spoke with the, about the spectrum, I'll show you the Hmm, I didn't shoot, didn't switch. Interesting. I'll show that it's locked. I'll come back to that. Maybe. Okay. Okay, good. So if you have a spectrum analyzer and you check what's the output of the multi-stacker, this is the national plan. And you can see the 85 dB signal level. So your multi-stackers as you sell, they'll come around 80 to 85 degree is the output. So we have other plans. Uh, because they're not overlap, so Victoria is slightly different frequency shifts. So that's what it does with the dip switches. When you set those, it uh, sets it to the right frequency location. Any questions? Any? So what I'll do, just go through quickly uh, some of the uh, associated products. You've got a power supply, 2 amp power supply, 12 volt that comes with multi-stacker. You can use the same power supply to power up your super broadband amp. <coughs> In future, it'll be shipped with 18 volt. You've got the power injector for cases where you want to remotely power components. <coughs> and notice that the power injector, when you sell these, needs to be up to 2.4 gig. So sell the King Ray approved or Foxtel approved for the Foxtel applications. Uh, we've got Diplexer, free to air and satellite, free to air satellite into combining into one, one cable. Um, as you install your components, if you have free ports, you need to have um, terminators, these are low cost uh, components that 
uh, you you sell with um, uh, the complete installation to make sure they there's no floating ports um, in this case you've got passive taps and the passive taps uh, can be um, four-way um, and I think six-way do we have six in this case is four ports and eight so frequency range again and here what you can see is the insertion loss uh, at lower frequencies and higher frequency. So eight way insertion loss is about five dB. Um, and uh, you have a return loss of greater than uh, 12. And then each tap has also got um, different um, attenuation. So the way the tap works is that you have a in and out so you can daisy chain these. You need to calculate if it's a da daisy chain situation. Uh, okay, you get 5 dB um, if you're at 2.4. But if you're at the output, you, depending on which one you choose, it's either 12, 15, or 20, or 16 dB loss. Sorry, let's go to slide one. So in this case, you've got the splitters. Difference between taps and splitters are um, with a splitter, you don't have a specified um, attenuation in there. But also, also, you need to be careful that you don't combine too many splitters because of the return losses. So what you do is you can have um, two-way, three-way, four-way, or eight-way splitter um, in this case. And each of these splitters has got different insertion loss. So eight-way is up to 15, uh, whereas two-way is only 5.5 dB. I think we covered the taps already. It's a repeat slide. And then active taps. Um, really, it's got amplifier, and you can uh, adjust the amplification uh, on these as well as the equalization. So, you see these holes, you've got a terrestrial gain um, as well as satellite gain, and you have an equalization control. And uh, the power capability is uh, with the 8 way 200. 80 milliamps, 12 volt, or 18 volt. And 16 and 32 use about 450, 500 milliamp power. So if you want to inject power and have four of them supported maximum of four from the same power supply, you use a two amp power supply and inject, and I would recommend 18 volt power supply, and you inject a power uh, via the ports. The reason it's uh, maximum four is that if you have 500 milliamp power consumption, um, your components, the passive components are rated to two amp, your splitters, etc. So you don't want to burn out your splitters. So you design your system to that specification. This optical transmitter, receiver, you can see the two ports here. And I think that's end of the slide. Any questions? Um, trade, trade. I don't. I have to come back. To no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's different price points for that. Any questions? No? Good. So you're ready to design systems? You're welcome to. <laughs> welcome. Thank you.